Our next coach is Nebraska's Matt Rule. Rule enters his second season as head coach of the Huskers, who opened the 2024 campaign on August 31st against UTEP. Coach Rule, welcome. We'll begin with your opening statement. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you uh, on behalf of our team. I appreciate uh, everyone covering us. Thank you to Commissioner Petiti and the entire Big Ten staff. Uh, welcome to uh, the four new teams, especially uh, UCLA, who I spent some time as a, as a student at. So uh, UCLA, UCLA is always near and dear to my heart. So welcome. Uh, very, very proud to represent the University of Nebraska. We brought three of our best student athletes here, uh, Ty Robinson, Isaac Gifford, and Ben Scott. If, you, if you'll just allow me for a second, you know, we, um, we brought them, they're all college graduates, over 94 starts, working on their master's degrees. But if, if anything else, in a day and age in college football where everyone's always talking about uh, who's transferring out, talking about recruiting, uh, these guys and a couple others uh, made the decision to come back and not go to the NFL but play another year. So I'm so grateful to them. I think what we'll see in this new era of college football is the teams that can stay together and have veteran staffs, veteran teams, are going to be really good. And I think they've given us a chance to have a really good team this year. So grateful to them. Uh, it's been an exciting time for us. It's a great time to be a Husker. Uh, Troy Dannon coming in and taking over, I think, has really brought a positive energy to the athletic department. Five Big Ten championships this year in the athletic department, multiple, uh, multiple athletes representing us in the Olympics. I finished 22nd in the all sports standings and so now it's our time to do our part. Uh, we think we have a really good team and we think that we're a team that uh, people are going to have to deal with this year and uh, I've liked the way that they've worked. We finished the, uh, we finished the semester with a 3.241 accumed GPA, the highest in school history. The guys are getting it done in the, in the weight room, they're getting it done in the classroom. Now we've got to get it done on Saturdays. So with that, I'll take your questions. Coach, we got first row on your right side. Coach Lane Harrington, State Line Par 5. How you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm all right. So let's talk about last season. It's no mystery. Nebraska at the Big Ten with 16 interceptions. However, it's year two. How do you see the offense evolving under Scott Satterfield and now that you have players like Dylan Rayola in the roster? Yeah, you know, um, I, I thought last year, you know, we played three quarterbacks. I think uh, when you look, go back and look at a lot of things that happened, um, a lot of guys did do a lot of good things. You know, it's obviously overshadowed with numbers, like you said. But, you know, Marcus is a, a coach that I trust and believe in. We brought in Glenn Thomas to be the quarterback's coach, who we have a lot of history, the three of us together. And um, we have a lot of skill. One of the things that happened to us last year is, you know, a bunch of our receivers we were counting on early got hurt. Two of our tailbacks got hurt. A couple of linemen got hurt. And in the midst of that adversity, I'm always looking for, like, hey, how do we get better? And we, we put the Jalen Lloyds in, the Malachi Coleman's, young players. And by the end of the year, Jalen and Malachi were good players. So now we enter year two, and those guys are a year older. Instead of redshirting, they, they now know what to expect. We have depth at receiver. We have depth in the running back room. We, we, we went out and recruited some really good players. We brought some guys in, in the portal, like Isaiah Nayor and, and Jamal Banks. So we have a deep receiver room. And we have a deep running back room. We have a veteran offensive line. And uh, we have three quarterbacks that, that, that we know can play. And so um, I, expect us, I expect us to be great on defense. And I expect us to make a real jump on offense. Last row on your right side. Hey, Coach. Trey Redfield with NTV News and Carney all the way here in the, in the back. Um, wanted to ask about John Butler. How does his hire um, help take this defensive back group to new heights in your second year here in Nebraska? Well, um, you know, uh, John's a guy I've known a long time, and I think any time that you can hire someone on your staff as a position coach who's been a coordinator, uh, they, they come in with a, a, another set of eyes. I've had a chance to coach against John when I was at Temple. He was at Penn State. Obviously, in the NFL, he was in Buffalo. You know, I mean, just think about in recruiting. For those guys who want to go to the NFL and they're, they're talking to us, you know, I've been in those draft rooms, but, but, but John's coached Micah Hyde. You know, he's coached Jordan Poyer. He, he's coached top five secondaries, and so... Um, you know, it was, it was unfortunate we had a change that late in the year, but we wouldn't have gotten John earlier. He was at a point where he was ready to get back in and start coaching. Um, it just kind of so happened that I was on vacation at the beach about two towns away from where he was, so it was all pretty fortuitous. Uh, we sat down, and Tony, Tony White's one of the best coaches in college football. 
He's an amazing defensive coordinator. Terrence Knighton is an amazing defensive line coach. Rob Dvorak, excellent young linebacker coach. I think John will bring some experience, a second set of eyes, and a guy that the players can trust will make them better. Fifth row on your left side. Hi, Coach. Abby Harris, Go Big Red Cast. After completing your first season in the Big Ten, what advice do you wish you would have received? Well, one of the things about being at Nebraska, you know, you, you, you do get a lot of advice. I mean, uh, you know, Coach Osborne's there all the time to help. Coach Solich is there to help. You know, Coach Osborne tried to warn me about the, the weather. He tried to warn me about the, the wind, and I heard it, but I didn't. It was, it was until it was like 30 miles an hour in my face that I was like, oh, Coach Osborne wasn't lying. I think the biggest thing I regret from last year was, was you know, when you're in pro football, it, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of quiet. And there, there aren't bands and things like that. The, the, the crowd isn't. And we started our first two games last year on the road in hostile environments. Minnesota, you know, they did a great job. They had a gold out for their first game. And so just getting readjusted to the crowd noise and, and the, the passion of the fans in the Big Ten, the, the, the atmospheres we're going to have to go into, um, we have to be better on the road. And so I wish I would have taken that. I would have taken, take, taken that to heart and gotten that advice. But I am so blessed. I mean, I, I get to coach college football, and some days I've got George Darlington, legendary legendary uh, uh, secondary coach. I mean, I might have Tommy Frazier or Eric Crouch. I, I might have Coach Osborne there. I might have Coach Solich there. Like, it, it's a, it's a f football coach's dream. First row on your right side. Kenneth Barry, touching on the tangents. Coach, with all your experience coming from – I mean, you go back to the Big 12 and Baylor. Defensively, how excited are you knowing you got all these former Pac-12 schools coming in and they run a lot of up-tempo and obviously the Big 10, smash mouth football. How excited are you to kind of take on that challenge? And when it comes to just the team, how do you feel like they're kind of really leaning into your message? And do you feel like it's similar to when you kind of had that big breakout season at Baylor? Yeah, I, I think you can tell when a team is ready to make the turn in their body language, in the way that they walk around the building. It's just confidence. Uh, for young people nowadays, they need, there's, there's nothing more than confidence. You know, there, there's such a fear of failure uh, because everything's evaluated. And, and I think when I walk through our locker rooms and I walk through our weight rooms and I walk out in the field, I see a confident team. I see a team that understands that games are going to come down to the final seconds and the narrative about close losses, you know, let's, we're going to turn that into close wins. Um, in terms of the teams coming in from from the West Coast, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for them. I do know that I do know that travel and weather are going to be real things in in this new Big Ten. You know, having to play and then travel maybe five or six hours and then play again the next week. Those are all things that the best minds will find the best solutions to. And so we're trying to model everything out as we go. Um, you might play one week and it might be 85 degrees and you might play the next week uh, up in Madison, Wisconsin, and it might be really, really, really cold. And so uh, all of us have our own challenges. I'm kind of focused on ours, but I, I do know this. You know, Deshaun Foster was a player when I was a GA. Lincoln Riley is one of my great friends in coaching. I've coached against him multiple times. Um, I have a lot of respect for the University of, you know, University of Washington. I think Dan Lanning's a great coach, so I think it's only made the conference better. On your right side here, first row. Heather Dinich with ESPN. I hear this confidence from you, but also coming at a time when you do have to go to USC and you're going to play Coach Foster, how do you balance that challenge of being on the brink of something good with the timing of these teams coming into the league and the Big Ten just quite frankly being so much more difficult to win? Yeah, I, I think it's a great question. Like I. I laugh with Troy sometimes. Like if 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 Haven Fields, our, our sport administrator, would have said, "Hey, I want to add uh, USC and UCLA to the non-con," and I'd have, I'd have thrown a fit. Like I'm not playing those guys. Well, here they are. So um, I think I think you know when you look at the Big Ten, playing nine conference games. More importantly, playing five road conference games. Not every conference plays five roads. Most of them, some of them, some of the eight, nine team, the eighteen team leagues, they play four road games, and sometimes one's like a neutral site, so they play three where you have to go into someone else's stadium. We have to, in the Big Ten, we have to go into someone else's stadium in our league five times and duke it out. So, but I think we'll have a lot of access to the college football playoff, and I think, I think four teams from this league should get in, get in every year because 
They're, this is the best league. This is the NFL of college football on my mind. It stretches from coast to coast, different time zones, different weather. That's not to diminish any other league. The SEC is amazing. These other leagues are great, but the challenge in the Big Ten is going to be is going to be really difficult. Travel, weather, and great teams. For us, you know, we think every game's a big game because we're playing in it, and uh, we want. You, you didn't come to Nebraska because you wanted to play an FCS slate. You came here because you want the challenge of, I mean, we get to go to the Coliseum and, and play football. How, how lucky are we? And so that's why you come to Nebraska. That's why in recruiting, like competitiveness is like my number one trait because I want guys who want to prove it on the field, you know, not, not anywhere else. On your left side, Coach. Coach Caleb Adams, Sports Philanthropy Network. Four numbers, 3.241. You were the first coach to come up and talk about the high marks academically of your team. I want to give you a moment to talk about the importance of education, and I want to applaud you for being the first coach to mention that. Well, that's very kind, and I'm, I'm sure all my colleagues are very proud of, um, very proud of all the things that they've done uh, uh, academically as well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm the son of a high school teacher. My dad's a teacher and minister. My mother uh, gave her life to working with women. You know, we lived in New York City, and football has brought me so much. You know, football brought me a, a bachelor's degree. It brought me a master's degree. I was on my way to, to, to my PhD and, and then got lucky enough to get a coaching job, and this is my passion. So uh, we're proud uh, of the players. You know, we have 20 graduates heading into the season. We'll have 10 more in December. So when we go to our bowl game, we'll have 30 college graduates on our team. And so... Um, at the end of the day, you know, we all want to win, but if you don't have a purpose that, that states that we want to raise great men, that we want our players, you know, I want our players someday to look back and say, my life is better because I played at the University of Nebraska and I played for those coaches. And I can think of no better way of doing that than, than education, uh, followed closely by community service and, and giving back. So we're going to try to win on the football field and off. We've got one final question on the back right. Hi, Coach. Kylan Mills with the Big Ten Network. Great to see you. Uh, something you've said is that it's a priority this season to address the turnover margin. Minus 17 last year, it's been an issue that's plagued this program beyond just that. Just curious, as you look ahead to fall camp, how do you try to address that, and where do you start in trying to shift those numbers? Yeah, you know, um, it's, it's, a, it's a blemish. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's nothing I've ever done before to be minus 17 right and so and that's we give the ball away 31 times we only took it away 14 so both sides have onus but to give the ball away 31 times and our season would have been different had that not happened um, the great news is is then you, when you look back at a season where you were almost we were five and seven and with two games left that we were still in the math to like to get to Indianapolis and you have something that outrageous you understand that, hey, if we just fix one or two things, we can be a really good team. We don't have to do an overhaul. We don't have to fire a bunch of coaches. We don't have to change the offense and defense. We really just have to win the turnover battle. And so um, I think anytime you want to seek change, the first thing you need is buy-in. I think by the end of the year, our players truly understood that, man, we, we, we have to protect the football and we have to take it away. We've practiced it. Uh, the, the thing that I've tried to do is, you know, I, I want to be a lifelong learner. I, I've, I've, I mean, I'm in, I'm in Texas this past week at coaching clinics, and I'm sitting listening to coaches talk, high school coaches, college coaches, about the way they're doing things because we have to find a way to go from minus 17 to plus 7. We have to find a way to get that done. And so we, we, we're going to practice it. We're going to coach it. We're going to, you know, allocate playing time based upon who protects the ball but also who takes it away. And, uh, but I think the buy-in came from our players early on. They recognized we need to do this because we have a really good football team. And um, you know what? If you turn the ball over three times, you're probably going to have a close loss. The close losses at Nebraska are not an affliction. It's, you know, we don't need to get out of voodoo doll. We need to hold the ball properly and knock it out, make one more catch, have a little bit more confidence, and go make one more play and win a couple games, and all of a sudden we'll be talking in a different tone. Coach Rule, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Go Big Red.